itself is not so easy, but being by the force of uh, destiny in the Second World War to be uh, uh, exiled from that country, we kind of uh, ended up doing voluntarily or involuntarily a gypsy sort of thing. Also, it is, I think, kind of influential that Eastern Europe, uh, where gypsies have been prevalent for many hundred years, uh, and that music was in our house since my grandfather's time. So uh, I think from uh, early age, when Saturday night rolled around, and uh, Pappy and the uh, old Cossacks would get around, the gypsy music would flow. And that sort of influenced the first part uh, of how I got into the uh, passionate or, or high emotional music, which I heard as a, as a child. And then, uh, of course, uh, it, it, evolutionary process followed how I finally ended up in flamenco later on. But I think the initial roots were from Eastern European uh, and from my father and grandfather. Tell me, as a flamenco composer interpreter, do you consider yourself a traditionalist, a traditionalist romantic, or a modernist? And just tangent to that, what do audiences prefer? All right, um, I think that this is also tied to your uh, first question. In the sense, one, enabled to acquire his flamenco skills, uh, he does it so by uh, starting as a traditionalist because one cannot begin to become uh, or develop his own style or become his own right without uh, going through the traditionalist school. And that I would consider would be something comparative to a higher educational process if it takes four or five years to get any kind of degree these days. I think that's about how long you should dwell in the traditionalist school and able to, number one, gain your skills, two, uh, so much control of the flamenco forms, which later, when under control, can be formed form like clay into other things. So one generally begins as a traditionalist, moves towards middle ground, where he comes up with his own stamp or, or his own flavoring too, which is a very welcome thing in flamenco, because if you played only traditional school, you would soon uh, disappear out of sight. This, of course, has happened to uh, a guitarist who I know from Utera, whose name was uh, Paco Aguilera. We all used to laugh because he used to play the kind of variations we'd learned uh, when we were uh, learning from masters. And when he was professional, he only played that material. He, was, he soon disappeared, uh, totally out of view, uh, after the uh, comic uh, thing of him playing uh, uh, small variations uh, of, of study kind seriously um, and lost its charm. So most of us usually go on to middle ground and usually stay there. I have not been satisfied with uh, staying in middle ground. So I have moved on to, to beyond that, and that is taking flamenco skills um, and other techniques which I have found in the pursuit of, of very, very bedazzling flamenco and move them into what I would hope to be uh, a successful classical transplant again using Eastern European ecstasy of melody and using these techniques which do not exist in classical guitar and take them uh, uh, beyond. And your second part of the question was what do audiences prefer? And I can only say that uh, uh, in the beginning I felt that being a non-Spaniard uh, I'm not sure that if I would have continued playing indefinitely the pure school of flamenco that I would have ever gotten as far as I have with the guitar, 
Therefore, I, I felt that uh, just if they knew I was not born in Spain, even if I was baptized by the gypsies in Spain with my name Andres El Leton or the Latvian, uh, because the gypsies said that I was too dangerous to be their enemy because I had learned so many of their skills and their music that they didn't want me to be their competitor. So they baptized me with a three-day ritual for 48 bottles of uh, beer in every uh, orifice of my clothing that was open and uh, or a trick like pouring it in your hat and putting it on your head. And this went on for three days. And, and uh, when the baptism was finally reached, then they said, okay, you're safe to... Safe to safe to leave, uh, because now we know that you're one of us, and we know that you shall never uh, be our enemy. So, I th that's about it, I can tell you on that. Is uh, flamenco music romantic? Uh, I think the romance is formed around it. I don't think that it is romantic in the, the way that we normally look at, uh, at romance, uh, or romantic music. It is brutal, brutal sometimes, it is tender sometimes, uh, flamenco music has a tendency to, uh, to uh, um, how shall I say, uh, go the extremes of the emotional gamut. Uh, that means uh, from brutal, from harsh, to tender, to soft. This is reflected by the techniques, from tremolo, to rough thumb, to rough rhythms, etc. It is, in a sense, forcing in a hard culture, as Spain is, which also doesn't have much topsoil and therefore is always a little poor, to, and this has made a very hard characters for them to breach their spirit, which is closed behind daily social masks. They are abusive with themselves, and flamenco music reflects that. But then, in the outer limits, it, it works on contrasting by plain tender aspects as well. So it's pretty much the gamut. But romantic, uh, never, hardly ever. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me something. Most of us have a very uh, stereotyped idea of what a gypsy is, and it's probably more negative than positive. You have lived with the gypsies. First of all, what is a gypsy? And could you define the true spirit of a gypsy and how this spirit has shaped his music? All right. Um, the, the first part of the question is uh, in relationship to what is life for the gypsies like, or what are the are gypsies? Uh, um, what are gypsies? Uh, well, most of us have a, perhaps oh, a romantic idea of okay. what a gypsy is. All right. uh, okay, I understand that. And there is more folklore about and around gypsies than perhaps has been written on the actual uh, life of what gypsies are. And therefore, um, let me try to, say, try to throw out a few uh, misunderstandings about them. Um, their origins has, have been made a mysterious question where the gypsies come from. This is not a mystery. Uh, this has been uh, appeared in, 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 in many, many uh, books and in many uh, historical writings that uh, Tamerlane, the cousin of, uh, of uh, Temujin or Genghis Khan, broke into India in the second Mo Mongol uh, expansion in 14th century. And when they broke into northern India, the tribes which were present there left because uh, um, Temujin was not known for compassion, uh, and I don't want to go into some of the delicacies he used to do to human flesh, like destroying a whole town uh, so there wasn't a living creature, dog, hen, or chicken, or a lamb behind it. So those people who left brought with themselves uh, all over Europe. They spread a northern branch, a central branch, Hungary, Finland, uh, upper branch, lower branch, uh, Spain. Spain arrived two different waves, one that traveled over 40 years across North Africa, one that arrived via Northern Europe and arrived in Barcelona, 1440. This is what, what, uh, what the origin of gypsies in Europe are. That they came from India is absolutely no, uh, no doubt. Uh, I've seen movies like the, the, the uh, from India, which are formed in uh, Bangladesh. And one day I was absolutely shocked to see half of the tribe of gypsies, which I lived in, Spain, and who had been there for 300 years or more, that they had the same faces as, uh, thank you, as, as those faces which I saw in Bangladesh, in northern India, as if my tribe was over there, and I know that they were there and didn't go to India to make the movie. Though all of the, the, the way that their beards grew, where their facial, some of their actions, their hands, the size of their hands, how their hair, their look, all was reflected in that. 
okay, this is the origin of gypsies. What is romantic about gypsies? What is good about them? Because they're a, they can be a nasty bunch. They're always out to get you, or maybe we would say in modern terms, a con job on you. The first obligation by birthright is to con you. If you can survive that, then you're, you're already... Well, to have, survive, to survive. They do it to survive and also for a sport and for also to show their tribe, their, their, their skillfulness. Presence of mind, presence of that. Presence of mind, presence of hand, presence of all. They need that for their identity back in their tribe to whom they must report and to whom they support. So therefore, they have to do that kind of job. If you survive that, you already reached a higher level in their esteem. They haven't given up on you yet. They're going to try. And they try time, from time to time, like a child, like a cat who says you can't be on the table. You'll be back on the table when you're not looking. Mm -hmm. Two years later, again. Or three years later, again. It's always provoking you. It's always at that level. But if you learn to play with that, then you're getting in their league. And then they start slowly to, to see you as one, if you can survive. Uh, I sometimes let them get away with it in the early part, only because they had mastered the guitar in certain ways which no other style of guitar had been. And that is a certain kind of madness that uh, how to fight with a piece, how to give all in a very short period of time. Total, total intensity. The kind that we reserve perhaps only, only in, uh, in, uh, in very, very intimate uh, love, love uh, situations. When you talk about this, yeah. this quickness of spirit and love, can you translate the quickness of mind, uh, the the spirit, the the survival aspect of the gypsy into directly into the music he plays or invented? Perhaps only on one level, and that would be on uh, improvisational abilities. That means uh, suddenly he's in the middle of a piece, and he can go this way when you thought that normally he plays that way, but his intensity uh, does not does not directly because that intensity they also keep for themselves. The music they play in public is not the music that uh, you're going to hear behind closed doors in intimate reunions or flamenco reunions. What attracted you to flamenco as opposed to jazz and blues, the other forms of improvisational music you Well, perhaps uh, here we can pick up the early beginnings is how does one get into it. My own uh, transition came when I got into uh, Eastern European gypsy music already. It had a great deal of intensity, although the accompanying pieces for, say, Russian uh, style of guitar were rather primitive. Then I tried to improve my skills by playing classical for two years and then folk music, uh, well, actually the other way around, folk music uh, general, and then to classical for two years. Then I heard flamenco and I realized that there is something going on. It was a combination of circus. I always dreamed of running away and being in a circus. And when I saw flamenco being played, it was a combination of the passion, which I knew from gypsy music, to a circus. It took a great deal of skill. And you looked for tricks. How can it be? How can it sound like four guitars and only one doing it? And then by looking closer, I could see that the man was actually doing these techniques. Then I was ready to sell my soul to the devil, as they say, and able to find what these techniques were and how I could be the master of this style of guitar, which seemed to me like the ultimate thing you could do with that instrument. Mm -hmm.